and it probably should all be relevant, um, taking stuff a lot from Hamburg and things, so hopefully. Um, okay, so, so I'm starting with learning objectives, so we're going to cover a number of um, conditions, including acute appendicitis, bowel obstruction, sigmoid, uh, volvulus, hernias, colorectal cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, and diverticular disease. Um, so we start with acute appendicitis, it's um, one of the most common surgical emergencies in the UK. It's, a, it, it's defined as a sudden inflammation of the appendix due to obstruction of the lumen and then invasion of the appendix wall by gut flora. Um, it, there's, uh, there's the incidence of 80,000 people per year. Um, there's no cause known. Um, so the appendix wall becomes inflamed and the lumen fills with pus. It becomes edematous and then the blood supply is decreased, leading to infarction, compromise of the and a compromise of the um, venous and arterial um, supply, and then uh, um, leading then to uh, damage and, and possibly perforation of the appendix wall. Um, so clinical features include central colicky abdominal pain, that's how it initially starts, and that's sudden, and then it radiates to the right of the fossa within 24 hours, um, or after 24 hours, of becoming sharp and constant. Um, you have, um, on examination, tenderness, guarding, a rebound. There are specific signs for acute appendicitis, including rossings, which is the most a common sign, and that's when you get, when you're pressing on your left, in, in your left iliac fossa, you actually get more pain in your right iliac fossa. There are two more signs, so a sign and probe sign. <coughs> they are, they occur with, so so a sign occurs with the retrocephal appendix, uh, with extension of the hip, and you get, you get pain. And then coke sign occurs with an appendix um, in relation to the obturator and turns, and that's with um, flexion and internal rotation. Um, so other clinical features are nausea, vomiting, um, fever, dry tongue. Um, you would check white cell count because you'd have leukocytosis and neutrophilia uh, commonly with this. Um, ultrasound is a good investigation for acute appendicitis, uh, but it's, it's also to rule out other things like ectopic pregnancy. Um, diagnostic laparoscopy is performed very often, um, especially if it's a typical case of, say, like a 17-year-old male or very young, or 17-year-old female with this typical characteristic pain that radiates from the central um, abdomen to the right iliac fossa. And um, most times, you know, they, they don't find anything, but that's the most common investigation, just to be sure that it's not an appendix. Um, you would also consider doing an abdominal x-ray to rule out obstruction, perforation, and ureteric colic. Um, conservative management with antibiotics and observation, um, but a lot of them, like I said, have diagnostic laparoscopy, and if it is an appendicitis, then they do a lap uh, or open appendicectomy, depending on whether there are complications. Um, Preoperatively, you can have a perfect appendix, um, peritonitis if it perforates um, an abscess formation. <coughs> Early postoperative complications, abscess, fistula, ileus, and iguanal hernia, urinary retention. If, if there's anything that you don't understand, like any terms that you come across that you don't know, then just let me know there and then so I can answer you straight away rather than us forgetting about it. Um, so a uh, late post-op complication are uh, incisional hernia and adhesions from the trauma. Um, this is actually a very good video on YouTube, so you can look it up. Um, it just doesn't, it's not loading up on here, but it's a very quick one. Within a minute, it just shows you what happens in the lap of the disectomy. That's a shame. Bowel obstruction. Um, large, I'm focusing on large bowel obstruction, because this is a low GI talk. Um, it's less common than uh, small bowel obstruction. The most common causes for uh, large bowel obstruction are tumours, diverticular, uh, diverticular stricture, and sigmoid or sequel volvulus. Do you know what the um, most common causes for a small bowel obstruction is? 
Yeah, education is is very fundamental. What else? Yeah. 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 Um, so clinical features, um, you get pain, distension, vomiting, though, uh, sorry, constipation. Um, on, on examination, you find that they could be, if it's severe obstruction, tachycardic, <coughs> hypertensive, so in shock, basically, uh, clinical shock. Dehydration, um, abdominal tenderness, high-pitched bowel sounds, um, uh, if it's obstruction, and reduced bowel sounds if it's ischemia. And that's not always strictly that. Um, um, on rectal examination, if it's if you find that the rectum is collapsed, then that is most likely to be the more serious cause, which is mechanical obstruction. If it's dilated, gas filled, then that is most likely to be pseudo obstruction, which is um, <coughs> also serious, but it's it doesn't require um, an operation. Okay, so pathophysiology, um, so you get the obstruction from tumour or whatever, and then you have gas and fluid accumulating. Um, the proximal valve dilates, you get um, per, um, the peristaltic activity increases, causing the colicky pain, and then inhibition of motor activity. This is a um, natural process to basically protect you from from it becoming worse. Um, and then strangulation caused by increased intraluminal, intraluminal pressure um, or direct direct vascular occlusion by obstructing the um, venous compromise leading to edema, which in turn can lead to ischemia necrosis, um, um, which can lead to perforation. So in a, if you on an X-ray, um, if you've got a, what, how sorry, how dilated must the large bowel be for it to be toxic? Yeah. And what about the cecum? Do you know? Because that's like that's wider than the rest of the bowel. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Eight. Ten. Yeah. 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 So investigations, routine bloods cross match because they, if it's a serious uh, cause and it's a mechanical obstruction, it could perforate and they could need um, need to go for an operation. So that it could perforate and they, they might need to go for an operation. So they need to be cross match. Um, on the abdominal X-ray, you see the horse which sorry, yeah, incompletely traversed the guts. <coughs> Uh, pathological dilatation of more than eight and sequel dilatation significant of more than ten. Um, and then you can also see sigmoid or sequel voluminous. Um, I've got x rays to show you for both for all three. And um, barium enema is another one but less common. C T is also another one. <coughs> a lot of times actually um, the patient has say a, a very serious a, a very bad bowel obstruction, but they only present with a very like mild, non-specific abdominal pain. So we do a CT because we can't rule out anything else, or we can't <coughs> find anything else that might cause this. And then it turns out to be like you know bowel obstruction on the CT. So clinical signs aren't always helpful. Um, if simple obstruction, meaning it's not you know pathological eight centimeters, then um, and if it's you know likely to resolve, then it's uh, no by mouth IVI, NG decompression, and uh, analgesia, oxygen, and an ABG because you're looking at the lactate and you're seeing whether that's very high. If it's very high, what does that indicate? So, so ischemia, um, it indicates ischemia and necrosis, um, which, which indicates that it's a very severe. It's, it's a severe, um, you know, at a severe stage. Um, so if complicated by strangulation or ischemia, uh, you would go for surgery such as a left hemicolectomy. Um, and you could, um, that may mean a colostomy for the patient. Um, complications um, of bowel obstruction are um, of injury from the operation or just 
uh, or post op ID, sorry, I put that in brackets, but it's now in addition. Um, recurrence of the obstruction. So this is, um, I don't know if you can see it well there, it's not, I don't think it's that clear from the screen here, but it, this is basically, is there a way to, That that's dilated, and you can see that it completes sort of like bolster there, um, not completely traversing the, the gut, which indicates that it's large bowel. Um, okay, and then sigmoid volvulus. So, this is a large sigmoid loop full of feces and distended with gas, which twists on its mesenteric head for to create a closed loop obstruction. It's responsible for 4% of intestinal obstruction in the UK. Um, it occurs in the um, elderly people, particularly because they can, they're prone to becoming constipated and uh, chronically constipated, which is a, um, a common cause for stigmoid polyphilus. Um, so the pathophysiology is that it twists in an anticlockwise direction and then the circulation is impaired after one and a half twist. Um, so this is that. Oh. So um, clinical features are acute abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, distension, absolute constipation. Um, <coughs> if it's serious with gangrenous bowel, then peritonitis, toxemia, and tach tachycardia. Um, X-ray is the main uh, investigation. Um, Management-wise, you're looking at endoscopic uh, decompression with insertion of latex tube past the twist and left it for 24 hours. If it cannot be untwisted in this way, then you would um, consider surgery um, where you would reduce the volubilis and then um, carry out a sigmoid resection. resection. <coughs> Complications are gangrene perforation, fecal peritonitis and death. And that's um, sigmoid volubilis. So have you seen this before? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's very extreme there. And the sequel of this doesn't look that much different, but hopefully with experience we'll kind of be able to differentiate between the two. Um, Okay, so this is another video, I wish you can it. It was about, it's a very impressive video of a guy in Spain having his operation for a sigma globulus and they're, they're literally opening it, his abdomen and it just comes out, just shoots out like this massive sigma um, colon. <coughs> so that was very impressive. <coughs> now hernias, um, there are many types, including vinyl, which includes Direct and indirect, femoral, and like incisional epigastric, sliding, um, lumbar, and uh, these other rare ones, PTO and sciatic. Do you know how to differentiate anatomically between direct and indirect? Yeah. Is anyone quite confident at it and would like to explain? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Okay, so how would, how would you differentiate direct and indirect? Direct to the inferior gastric artery and indirect to the artery. Yeah. Oh, oh, anatomically, sorry. Oh, you mean as in yeah, direct? Yeah, anatomically, sorry. Oh, so direct to like the posterior wall of the inguinal canal, and indirect like through the canal itself. Yeah, through the canal. So in relation to the, because you were saying, you know, what yeah, they are sorry. in relation to the inferior gastric artery. So where's the direct? Medial. Medial. Yeah. Even I have trouble with it, but yeah. I think I, I like L. That's how I think I like L. Okay, yeah, I guess that's, that's an easy way. So you can see it here, femoral vessels, and then the direct. Um, the direct is um, where there's a, the, the hernia protrudes right through the posterior wall of the inguinal canal, and the indirect goes through the um, deep and the superficial ring. And it, it can go into the scrotum. So I've got it here. So I hope this picture helps. 
So it direct, it passes through the internal vinyl ring and it flows out through the external ring. So this is the, it, so internal vinyl is around here and then external would be around here. So external is lower down. Um, and then it makes them to the scrotum, it reduces upwards and laterally. It moves downwards and medially on the leaf and is controlled by pressure over the leaf ring. So when you cough, you get that impulse. Um, direct, it pushes its way directly forward through the posterior wall of the inguinal canal into a defect of the abdominal wall. Um, it does not extend to the scrotum. It reduces straight back. It's not controlled by pressure in the midpoint of the inguinal ligament. Um, and it's common in the elderly. Um, okay, so that's that. Are you happy with that? Okay, so the deep internal, deep or internal ring, that's the midpoint of the inguinal ligament and 1.5 centimeters above the femoral pulse, which crosses the mid inguinal point. The superficial external ring is a split in the external of the aponeurosis, just superior and medial to the pubic tubercle. And the Hesselbach's triangle is medial to the inferior epigastric artery and lateral to the <coughs> abdominis. Um, so there's the deep inguinal ring. Okay. Sorry, you, you try to differentiate between a femoral hernia and an inguinal hernia when you're talking about pubic tubercle. Um, the. Mm, no, I mean the femoral hernia is. Um, I'm just trying to. I didn't actually go into the femoral hernia anatomy. But I, I think you can use those anatomic, anatomic sort of uh, landmarks to, to, to differentiate between a femoral and an inguinal. If that makes sense. I haven't gone into the anatomy of femoral um, hernias. But uh, what, what is your question? Is it just are you just pointing out the anatomic landmarks? No, I'm just pointing out. Like basically, I'm just defining what the um, so what the deep ring is and what the oh. superficial ring is. But I haven't gone into the femoral anatomy, so I can't. To be honest, I can't remember um, where it is exactly. Um, so inguinal hernia management would be um, with open repair. So they normally use mesh. Um, complications are hematoma, wound infection, um, recurrence, testicular atrophy. Uh, and others. Um, you can also do laparoscopic. Um, complications of hernias, incarceration, obstruction, and strangulation. Do you know how to differentiate all three? Do you want me to go through them? So, incarceration is when the hernia is irreducible or the contents are not necessarily strangulated or obstructed. Um, with obstruction, the lumen of the bowels, the contents, which is the bowel is obstructed by the neck of the hernia, which leads to swelling of the bowel um, or, or peritoneum. And strangulation is when there's a lack of blood supply, uh, it's cut off, causing and leading to anemia. Okay. So colorectal cancer um, is the second most common cause of death from malignancy in the UK after lung cancer. Less than five percent of patients have it aged less than four, uh, less than forty years. Um, the peak incidence is in the seventy to eighty year old. It's common in females. Um, predisposing factors are diet, uh, lack of fiber, particularly genetic, uh, so um, FAP and HMPCC, and inflammatory bowel disease. But there's no sort of direct cause directly. Um, pathology. Um, so these have patients with FAP and HMPC have a higher incidence of right-sided tumours. Um, and then I hear I'm talking about recurrence after 10 year, within 10 years um, with, who, with patients who have been treated for CA colon. Um, so the cancer, can, so 12.5% of the cancers occur in the sequin. 12.5 is uh, in ascending colon, 12.5 in the transverse and descending. 25, so basically 75% of cancer of the colon occur below, so from sigmoid colon down. 
um, and most of them are, are adenocarcinomas, um, you get direct lymphatic and blood uh, transmutic and implantation routes of spread. Um, Duke staging is used, that's quite common, and I think that comes up in exams sometimes. sometimes. Um, so I've got it here. Sorry, I'm talking about clinical features first. <laughs> so clinical features of cancer, you get you know, your night sweats, anorexia, weight loss, anemia, change, and then specific ones to bowel cancer, change of bowel habit, PR bleeding, abdominal mass, um, and then you can get systemic ones. Um, investigations, um, so you go, you can go through your screening, um, and then you know, depending on how at what risk level you are, you get, you get, you know, flexible sigmoidoscopies, coronoscopies, um, imaging, including CTs and varimilimus. This is the Duke staging, so it's A, B, C, D. Uh, depends on where the, the extent of the tumour and then it tells you the five year survival rate. So with A it's confined to the bowel wall and the that's the, the best survival rate of 83%. B is when it goes through the wall and but the lymph nodes are not involved. Um, C is when they are involved but there's no other mets and then you've got C <coughs> which is highest node involved. Um, ND where there's this to the Mets and that's got a very low survival rate. Um, complications of bowel cancer, <coughs> obstruction, perforation, fistulas, uh, intersubception, management with um, so hemicolectomy, Hartman's, mm -hmm. um, so basically it's major surgery um, and because most of them are erectile tumours, um, abdominal perineal excision of the rectum is a very common operation, so low anterior resection. Um, post op complications, so your normal wound infection, uh, bleeding, you can get obstruction, water bowel function, erectile dysfunction. Um, inflammatory bowel disease, you've got Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Um, it basically is um, inflammation of the bowel with no, with no cause. Um, it's more common in developing countries, it affects females more. Um, ulcerative colitis has a higher inc incidence than Crohn's. Um, there are predisposing factors including autoimmune factors, family history, environmental and dietary factors. So this is Crohn's. You've got skip lesions. Crohn's typically affects um, the whole alimentary canal from the mouth to the anus but it, it's mainly in the ileum, so it mainly affects the small bowel and it also affects with extra intestinal um, signs like um, mouth ulcers. Um, so, so, yeah, so we'll talk about Crohn's first. So microscopic features, like I said, affects any part of the canal, um, but mainly ileum and colon. Skip lesions, uh, did, you, did you know what they are? Do you, and you can see them on the endoscopy picture. Um, then you've got microscopic features including all these things. Uh, so non uh, yeah so it ulcers, lymphoid follicles, um, it's quite hard to remember to be honest, but it's just I just learned to my heart. Um, I don't didn't even know what most of them meant. Um, histology, it affects the whole thickness of the bowel wall. It's got a cobblestone appearance, um, and you get deep um, ulcers forming, and which can lead to fistulas. Ulcerative colitis occurs mainly in the um, <coughs> lower part of the GI tract. It's continuous. It, it's, it doesn't have a, um, include any skip lesions. It's a continuous inflammation throughout the wall, throughout the length of the colon. Um, it affects the mucosa mainly. Um, so only large bowel, mainly rectum and sigmoid. Um, microscopic, microscopic features, again, granulomas, crypt abscesses. Um, histology, limited to the mucosa, um, and you, you have smaller and sh more shallow ulcers for me. Um, so clinical features, change of bowel habit, including diarrhea, um, 
Dari Eleni, um, you get mucus, bleeding, anal fissures, passes, <coughs> extra intestinal features. Do you know any at all, apart from the mouth ulcers? <laughs> Yeah. Higher yeah. down the Sorry? Higher down the Yeah. And arthritis. Ulcer ulcerative colitis, bloody diarrhea, mucus, urgency, incontinence, um, weight loss. Um, and then you have severe acute colitis where you get very frequent stools, more than 10 a day. Um, you become very unwell with tachycardia, pyrexia, um, and a tender and distended abdomen, and it may progress to acute toxic dilatation. So this is pyodel with agronosum, which you mentioned. <coughs> That's what it looks like. And erythema nodosum. Okay. Um, so investigations, sigmoidoscopy, coronoscopy, barium melanoma, that's less common. You, you'll do, you do bloods. Um, and then stool to differentiate a bunch of valid disease from, infect, from infective um, inf from infective bowel disease, infective colitis. So medical management, um, mesalazine is a typical one. It's a 5A, say, um, steroids, cyclosporine, azathioprine, um, and then conservative management with a replacement of fluids, uh, nutrients and uh, electrolytes. Um, I think infliximab is um, more is used more commonly these days. Um, sometimes antibiotics if there's an infective element to it. But you should see um, the patient making you know good recovery with medical. So a lot of times they're treated medically. However, if if much about if their attacks are happen very um, often and the medical management isn't working, patients young, fit, it can have, you know, not necessarily young as in 16, 17, but they're, you know, they're younger and fitter and they can t uh, take an operation, then that would be a good indication for it. So there are different types, but essentially you're resecting some of the bowel mass. Um, okay, so uh, this so complications um, of ulcer ulcerative colitis, you're looking at the toxic omega colon, particularly, uh, particularly in very unwell patients, um, perforation, hemorrhage, and malignant change. So I think malignancy is more associated with um, ulcerative colitis. Um, Crohn's, um, you can get small bowel strictures, fistulation, perianal sepsis, and perforation. Diverticular disease, um, so I've got four different definitions here. Diverticulum is an outpouching out of the gut wall. Diverticulosis is um, basically a di pre the presence of a diverticular. A diverticular disease is if these are symptomatic, so like constipation. Um, diverticulitis is inflammation of the diverticular. So it's more common in developed countries, incidence is increasing. It occurs in older people, so 6% in those aged 18 and above. Oh, sorry, 18. Um, pathology, so lack of dietary fiber leads to slow transit of food, um, leading to high pressure in the bowel. Um, this forces mucosa to herniate through the muscle layers of the gut at weak points. Um, so this is a picture of the different types, so the different things that I've defined. So you can see there, diverticulitis, the inflammation, and then diverticulosis, mainly the sigmoid coronal. Um, features, <coughs> change of bowel habit, pellet-like stools, abdominal discomfort, and bloating, PR bleeding, and mucus, nausea, anorexia. That is Investigations, you do bloods, um, chest, you, do, you would do a chest x-ray if you're suspecting perforation. Um, what would you see on the chest x-ray if you're suspecting perforation? Um, yeah. Uh, abdominal x-ray, 
uh, if you're suspecting obstruction or ileus, uh, you can do a CT. It can be uh, in diverticulitis, it can lead to anything, all sorts, including abscesses and so on, which can make the management of the patient much more complicated. So, um, conservative management is with diets, antimuscarinics and antispasmodics, medical, um, so that would overlap with conservative, nil by mouth, IVI, antibiotics if needed. Um, so with diverticulitis, you will need antibiotics. And NG if I is. So with an NG, you're um, wanting, in an I list, this is a bit off topic, but with an NG, you're, you're letting out the gastric contents to prevent this from being aspirated. Um, you're not actually treating the ileus. So I think um, that I, I should have mentioned that before with the bowel obstruction and so on. Um, surgical is um, if they have recurrent attacks and um, chronic complications. And that's it. Any questions? Thank you very much.